them sick, we ask you to be with them, that you travel with them, that you comfort them right now where they are at, at home or wherever they may be going. We ask you your blessings, Lord, this morning upon this service. Lord, we come to worship you. You are the reason why we gather in this place because you are the apple of our eye. And we come to join the rest of our brothers and sisters around the world to praise and worship you this morning on this day that you have made. We ask your blessings now. And as we worship you, may our, the sounds of our voice be a sweet sounding cymbal to your ear. We ask these things, dear Lord Jesus, in your holy precious name. Amen. Would you rise and let's worship God together.
Yeah. 
It's as if we've wandered the desert. Travelers without a home. Together yet alone in this uncertainty. An uncommon time, unexpected, undefined, binds us, unites us, does not divide us, but reminds us of who we are. A body, not a building, unrelenting, unyielding, persevering, revealing the faithfulness of God. Maybe this virus has started a fire inside us, ignited us, inspired us to live louder, love harder, care deeper. Six feet, six miles, or a world apart. Our calling remains the same. For we are the body of Christ. Six feet, six miles, or a world apart. Our calling remains the same, for we are the body of Christ. We are the church. We are the community. We are a community for Christ. The scripture reminds us and says, therefore, let us Hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as we see the day quickly approaching. Let us not become weary in well-doing. Let us not become weary in meeting together. Let us not become weary in well-doing, for at the proper time we will reap a good harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for your Holy Spirit. I pray that you come, O God, and meet with us and speak to us and move us in a way that you, that we've never been moved before. Reignite in us, Lord, the fire. Fan the flame within our hearts. Let us burn brighter, stronger, Lord, and let the world see that we are unashamed of who we are. We are the community of Jesus Christ, that we are the family of God. I pray that you speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Right now, the news, the media, health officials, CDC, and the government is starting to tell us that we are going to see another spike in this coronavirus this winter. And due to the height concerns of spreading the coronavirus, our state may again close businesses down, schools down, and may demand for us to stay home again. And upon hearing this, I said to myself, not again, not again. I have to be honest with you. When I heard this news, I got frustrated. I became frustrated. One, because I don't want to see anyone get sick. I don't want to see anyone to die from this COVID-19, this coronavirus, from this disease. Two, I don't want to have to endure another season of isolation again and being locked up in my home, separated from my friends, loved ones, and especially from the church. And three, because I know that, because I know that they're going to try to close down the churches again. 
They're going to try to close down where God's word is preached that day, Sunday after Sunday or throughout the weeks. In addition to shutting the church's doors down, it messed up my entire plans of wanting to see my mom in California. I want to see her. And because of this mandate that is, I'm almost anticipating for it to happen, that it's going to prevent people to travel anywhere once again, canceling people's travel plans around the world. Businesses will be held. Travel, travel businessmen that have to travel to establish relationship with their with their uh, buyers or suppliers, it's going to be interrupted by COVID-19 again. And right now, right now, even pastors are already beginning to speak about closing their churches down again. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it this time? How are we going to go about it this time? They're even talking about letting go their, their, their staff and sending them home so that they won't have to be in the office or how they're going to work from home or whatnot. But I want you to know, church, that upon hearing this, I immediately heard the Holy Spirit speak to my heart. When I heard the news on the TV, and I, I, I immediately heard the Holy Spirit tell me, this is not what God wants. This is not how God designed for his church to worship him. Not in isolation. Not away from the community of believers that we're called to be. And at the same time that I heard the Holy Spirit say this to me, I said to myself, no, not again. I am not going to sit at home anymore. I am not going to be denied the fact that I want to worship God as a community of Christ that we're called to be. We're taking precautionary measures. We're doing everything we can to keep everyone saved. I don't want anyone to get saved. But yet, man, I long to fellowship with you. I long to see you every Sunday. And I long to worship God together as the believers that we're called to be. Again, I want to be transparent with you. I want you to know that the demands of pastoring, for me, sometimes are constant. I'm always on the go. Weighty sometimes, they weigh heavy on my heart. And sometimes they can become very discouraging at times, especially when I hear news like this, especially when churches are empty, especially when churches haven't even opened their doors yet. But I'd rather, I tell you what, I'd rather be constant. I'd rather be moving. I'd rather have a weighty heart. And I'd rather be discouraged than to grow complacent and ignore what the Bible says about gathering together as a church and be disobedient to God's commandments about being a community for Christ. And even though I love to preach and I love to pastor, I love it. That's something that I just love to do. I want you to know the truth, though. I have to battle against the temptation of isolating myself from the church, from the believers, from the group that God has called me to minister, to love, and to admonish in his ways. It's true. I'm human. I'm not Superman. I have a heart for you. I have a burden for you. I have a burden for the community of God. I have a burden for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a burden to see the church together unified in spirit, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So having said that, this morning, I beseech you, church. That's an old word. It means I'm begging you. It means I'm imploring to you for us not to neglect the gathering of ourselves. It is time for us to quit being afraid and quit isolating ourselves and start being the church that God has created us to be, that God has commanded us to be. So this morning, let me offer you four reasons why we must never isolate ourselves from the body, from the community of Christ, 
One, because God created us to be a community. God created us to be a community. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them so that they may not be alone, so that they will have companionship one with another, so that they will have koinonia with each other and with God. This is why in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And prior to this passage, this verse, the scripture tells us that God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. And when he took the children of Israel... Out of Egypt, he took them out as a nation, as a community, as a family of God that they were. He didn't take them out individually. He took them out all at once, collectively. And they lived with each other in community. That's what we're called to be. We're called to be a community, a family of God. But I want you to know that the American individual consumer mindset has infiltrated the church. Let me say that again. The American individual consumer mindset has infiltrated the church. And what do I mean by that? Let me explain. Today, Christians worry more about what the world thinks than what God thinks. The world worries more about what the government says than what God says the Bible says. And about what the faith community says about the church. We we, we have to listen to God. We have to drown the, the, the noise that is coming from the media and from the newspapers and from the government because I've been told before, you know what, they they're in, in Washington there's a bunch of liars. And, and, and I have to call it, call it like it is. They lie all the time. They tell half, tr- half truths. They only tell you what you want to hear. Just as long as you reelect them and they can have office. Can I get an amen? amen? It's the truth. I've been told before, you know where liars go? They go to Washington and then they go to hell. You know, Paul, for Paul, seeing all this coming, though, the Apostle Paul, he saw the division. He saw how the world was going to infiltrate the church. He saw how the world was going to affect Christians in in, in the church. And he wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, he wrote, but understand this. He's saying to Timothy, but understand this, young Timothy. In the last days, in the last days, terrible times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, without love of good, without love of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the form of godliness but denying the power, denying its power. In other words, what Paul is saying is there's going to come a day, Timothy, when people are going to worry much more more about themselves, more about the worldly affairs, more about worldly pleasures than they will about God. Does this sound like the world we're living in today? It's all about me. Church, one of the things that I know the Bible teaches us is that God is trying to unite a community of believers. He's bringing in the harvest. He's he's bringing in the harvest. He's gathering the wheat. He's gathering us to join together and have sweet fellowship one with another. In fact, he is trying to bring both Jew and Gentile together, the Bible tells us. Into a one, into one body, one community, the body of Jesus Christ, which is the church. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 
through 13 and verse 18 says, Remember that at, the, at that time you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Paul says it this way. He says it this way earlier in 1 Corinthians. He says, remember who you were before you met Christ. Remember where you were. You were nothing. You, as a matter of fact, he says, the last time I checked, the last time I checked, you, you, were, you were not of noble birth. None of you were scholarly individuals. Let me continue. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of the promise, without hope, without God in the world. But now, but now in Christ Jesus, you once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but our fellow citizens. You are a community. A community, a citizens of your community of the kingdom of God, your citizens with the saints and members of God's household. You are a community, you are a family of God. We are members of God's family, God's community, God's people. Church, the day that you and me ask Jesus Christ, the day we together bent our knees at one point or another and asked Jesus into our hearts and lives, we became members of God's community, of God's family in general. But, but believers today are doing the opposite. They want to excommunicate, they want to isolate themselves they want to live separate lives apart from the body. And let me share this with you, that you cannot do that. You cannot do that. That is unbiblical. It goes, it's contrary to what God is trying to teach us to do. And I, want you to, and I want you to know, as we pursue the gospel community, we will find ourselves fighting against the American individualistic consumerism of the culture that we live in today and, and who is going to try to keep us from the community of Christ. It's going to try to prevent you. Culture already does. The schools, they hold, they hold sporting events on Sundays. They're trying to keep you out of church already. They're doing a little bit at a time. You know what I heard one time? They said, if you tell a lie enough, it will soon become the truth. Adolf Hitler said that. And the reality is, we need one another. The reality is that God created us to be, to need community, to need each other. So it brings us to the second point. God created us to need community, to need each other. The author of Ecclesiastes wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Listen to what he says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either, if either, of, them one, if either of them fall, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who, has, who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone, husbands and wife? Isn't it nice to have your spouse with you on cold winter nights to keep your your feet warm, or she puts her feet on you to keep her feet warm. Isn't that nice? It's nice, isn't it? Two, keep warm. The one may be overpowered. Listen to this. The one may be overpowered. Two can defend themselves. And lastly, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. We need each other. We are strong together as a family of God. The church cannot exist by individuals alone. We exist by a community that God has formed us to be. Church, God created us to be community. God created us to need one another. Listen to what Rick Warren wrote. We were created for community, fashioned for fellowship, and formed for a family. And none of us can fulfill God's purpose by ourselves. 
One of the means God provides for us for our endurance in this world is the church, community living. Because through the church, we are able to encourage one another. We're able to lift each other up. We're able to make each other laugh. And when someone's crying, we rejoice with those that rejoice and we mourn with those that mourn as Romans chapter 12, 15 says. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are able to lift each other up. We're able even to rescue each other. When you're hurting, when you're going through a crisis, when we see that you're going in the wrong direction, we're able to jump out maybe in front of you and say, stop, you're going the wrong way. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, Paul writes, Brothers and sisters, if someone, if someone is caught in sin, you who lives in the Spirit, by the Spirit, should restore that person gently. We can rescue each other. We can help each other. And we can restore one another through the love of Jesus Christ found in his church. The reality is that when we need that kind of a gospel community, we need that kind of a gospel community. We need the community that is found in the church. I need you. I need you, church. I need you, brothers and sisters. Which brings us to our third point, that God created us to grow as a community. <laughs> you can't have a family by yourself, can you? <laughs> you probably can. You can go adopt other kids, but you cannot have biological children on your own. You cannot have a family by yourself. You have to have a companion. The way God has designed it, male and female, and then you have your offspring and if God blesses you and God moves you and touches your heart, then you, you see a child that you love, you embrace it, and you adopt it, and you bring it into your family, just as God has adopted us and brought us into his family. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you did that. Scripture teaches us that God has gifted the church to help us grow. He's helped, he's given us individuals, people that have a wealth of wisdom, brothers and sisters with gray, silver hair. I love you. You have no idea how much your beautiful hair stands out to me because I know that you are, that you have been gifted with a wealth of wisdom and I'm drawn to you because I love you. I love gleaning from those wonderful experiences that you share with me of how God sought you through and how he moved you through the waters and the rivers in the hard times and even the good times. Listen to what Paul writes. He says, Christ himself gave apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up so that we will grow, so that we will grow stronger until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure and fullness of Christ. Did you hear that? <laughs> that's, a, that's great. You see why you're important to me? Because I glean from your wisdom. I glean from you. I, I, you know, I'm an extrovert. I love crowded areas. I draw energy from environments like that. I can go to a ballpark and it just like, I get become electrified. I, my hairs start to stand up. And I begin to shout and jump and, and cheer for my team even more. Community helps us to grow and mature and godly holiness living. Let me give you three reasons how. It keeps us accountable. It keeps us accountable to one another. 
to we sharpen one another. Scripture teaches us as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens another man's continents. We become sharper so that we can hold the edge, so that we can cut, so that we can be a sharp instrument in the hands of the master of God Almighty of Jesus Christ when he chooses to use us. And three, because it, it pleases God. That's the most important one of them all. It pleases God. It pleases him. I once heard God's most happy when he sees his children to playing together. It pleases God. Number four, because God has called us to worship him as a community. We are called to worship God together. Listen to what Scripture tells us to do in Psalms 95, verse 6 through 7. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. Do you hear that? He is our God, plural, not singular. He is our God. Say that with me. He is our God. Say it again. He is our God. He is our God. And you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. You are the church. And I need you and we need each other. In Acts, the book of Acts gives us a perfect example of how we are to live with one another. As the early church did in the first and early first century. Listen to what Luke writes in chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread, of bread and praying. You, you, if you can tell, if you can look at me, you can tell I love to fellowship. All right? Look at, look at, me, look at this. <laughs> I love to break bread with you. I love fellowshipping. I love praising God with you and getting to know you and just spending time with you. And hearing how God has sought you through tough times and good times and in between times. And how you're still worshiping God because of all that. Because we serve a good God, don't we? We serve a good God, don't we? Say it again. Let me, we serve a good God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, again, Paul says... Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, and singing in psalms together, and hymns together, and spiritual songs together, and thanking God with our hearts together. In closing, we are created to be a community. And to, and to isolate ourselves is working against what God is trying to accomplish in the church. We were meant to be community because God created us to be community. Because God created us to need community. Because God created us to grow as community. And because God created us to worship him as com community. If you're watching at home, maybe for the first time, and maybe you feel left out, and you're looking for a community to belong to, look no further. We're located here at 2403 West Kirby Avenue, Champaign, Illinois. Come and visit us. Be part of this community. We're not going to judge you. We'll love you. We'll take you in at just as you are. You come and join us. Tell your friends. Tell your brothers and sisters, we are a community, and I love you, and I need you. Let us pray. Father, I praise you, and I thank you for this wonderful service this morning. Lord, I thank you for how your Holy Spirit speaks to us and how it beckons us to be community, to love one another because we need one another, to admonish one another because we glean from one another, 
And Lord, and I pray that you will help us to live at peace with one another so that we can reflect your light as a community, Lord, in this dark, dark world that we live in. Father God, let your light shine in and through us, I pray. In Jesus' name, I ask these things, dear Lord God. Amen. Amen. In closing, we are going to bless the morning tithes and offerings, and we're going to ask God's blessing upon the offering this morning. Uh, Father, I praise you and I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to give back to you from, the, from that of which you have given to us and entrusted us with. Lord, I pray that you would take this and do with it like you did the two fish and five loaves. Multiply it, Lord, so that it will be able to do what it's supposed to do for the furtherance of your kingdom, for your honor, for your glory. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we close with our doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May His face shine upon you. You're, be blessed. You are dismissed. <laughs>